the ASUS ROG Strix RTX 3090. The fastest consumer graphics card on the market, it comes loaded with a ton of VRAM, cores, and a $1,500 price tag. And now six months later, how has the RTX 3090 matured? Is there any value for gamers or content creators who need a no compromising GPU that can tackle any workflow you may want to throw at it? Be sure to stick around for the entirety of this story because we are kicking it off with a suit of 4K and 1440p benchmarks with every setting and every game turned up to the near max along with overclocking, temps, power draw and more. Let's jump into it. But if this is your first time to the channel you want to learn more about building PCs and other gaming related stuff, click the subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss a thing. What's happening YouTube and the internet? Terrence here and we are back inside the lab and taking a look at the Aces Rock Strix RTX 3090 six months later, six launch to see how well it performs still at 4K and 1440p. And now we already unboxed this $2,000 behemoth of a GPU and went over its specs in all of its glory in a previous video and I'll be sure to throw a card up to that video toward the end of this one or you can find a link down in the description box below to that video but going over the specs here in short order the RTX 3090 has 24 gigabytes of super fast GDDR6X memory on a 384 bit interface over 10,000 plus CUDA cores 82 second gen RT cores for improved ray tracing performance and 328 third generation tensor cores to power Nvidia's uh, rendering AI which boosts frame rates in games that support DLSS without uncompromised image quality. DLSS or deep learning super sampling is a feature we are going to take a look at in a separate video as the purpose of this video is to test the RTX 3090's pure rasterization power at 3840 by 2160 and 2560 by 1440p which will be tested on our recently upgraded Core Shredder X399 build which is running a 1920x 12 core 24 thread CPU which should pack enough IPC and clock speed to keep up with the ASUS ROG Strix RTX 3090 at higher resolutions and a few other upgrades in the form of a 360mm AIO, the Intermax Lick 2 TR4 II. It's especially made for Threadripper with a cold plate that's designed to cover 100% of the IHS on a premium fully addressable RGB water block. And then the second upgrade which was purely an aesthetic one as they added a cable mod custom sleeve pack to give the interior a coordinated and more premium look to it. With the final addition of course being the Aces ROG Strix RTX 3090 which really complemented this system in this form. And now with the latest Nvidia drivers installed, Windows updated to its latest form, let's roll the 4K and 1440p benchmarks and see what the fastest consumer graphics card has to offer now that it's paired with our 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM and our overclocked 12 core AMD Threadripper. Chopper. No, hey, stick to the plan. What? 
stick to the fucking plan. Come on.
Why does this $2,000 graphics card exist? Because it has to. And now looking back to see at how this Asus ROG Strix RTX 3090 performed, starting with a few games that stood out the most at both 4K and 1440p, and we're going to start here with Watch Dogs Legion, which looks stunning at both 4K and 1440p, and we saw FPS averages close to 60 FPS and halfway decent minimum and 1% lows, definitely playable without a doubt, again not having to compromise on any of the graphic settings to hover around our monitor's refresh rate. And then another game that's new here to our benchmarking catalog, and that's Control, which also stood out to me in 4K with its detailed environments, but also ran really well at 1440p, which we saw averages of over 60 FPS with shaky minimum and 1% lows. The dips were noticeable, noticeable, but at 1440p, the 3090 blew past 100 FPS and had phenomenal minimum and 1% lows, averaging over 80 FPS in both categories. And then the medium, which benefited from the extra pixel density at 4K, looked really detailed and ran smoothly, averaging close to 60 FPS at 4K and 60 plus FPS at 1440p. The minimum and 1% lows left much to be had at both resolutions, but the game very much still was playable. And more fine-tuned games like GTA 5, which ran really great and looked great at both resolutions, averaging over 60 FPS at 4K and 100 plus FPS respectively at 1440p. And this was with every setting turned up to its near max, but at 4K, less optimized titles like Cyberpunk 2077, which was quote, you know, okay, end quote, playable, but not at a frame rate for me personally. And we talked about this on last week's live stream. And if you're new here to the channel and you made it along this far of this video, first of all, I appreciate you watching, you know, this up to this point, but we do go live every Saturday around three or four o'clock PM. I do welcome you to find more information down in the description box below. But, and then there was also Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which doesn't appear to be as optimized as Watch Dogs Legion and Crisis Remastered, which I opted out of testing in the quote, can it run crisis preset because it was playable, but very much brutal. But all of those games would need to have their settings tweaked it to achieve a universal uh, frame rate or one that's at least closer to that 60 Hertz targeted refresh rate. And then to test the thermals, I put the tempered glass back on the case and ran a Furmark test and the Asus ROG Strix RTX 3090 at stock settings scored about 7,000 points and hit a max temperature of 67 degrees C on the 4K preset. And again, this is in an area with about 25 to 26 degrees C ambient temperatures and was roughly the same with the tempered glass window off during the game of benchmarks. And I see why Nvidia recommends a 750 watt power supply unit because the RTX 3090 pulled in nearly 600 watts during that four mark benchmark test. And I know I didn't show it in the gaming benchmarks, but we also ran a few of the 3D Mark benchmarks, starting with the Fire Strike Ultra test, which scored a little over 12,000 points. Time Spy brought in a little over 16,000 points. And then Fire Strike Extreme scored a little over 18,000 points. And again, this was with the RTX 3090 at stock settings drawing a little over 600 watts during those tests, which were all registered on the Cool Man watt meter. And that was also in line with the Watch Dogs Legion synthetic benchmarks, which pulled a staggering 650 watts during that run. And then overclocking, at least on air anyway, was less than stellar as you already seen during the overclocking segment. But I was pushing for a stable 2.1 gigahertz overclock on air, but alas, a pipe dream is a pipe dream until it's a feasible reality, which would likely come into fruition should we put this GPU on water and undervault it to compensate for its normal power draw. So more on that later. But temperature, power draw or limitations and enclosure all played a role to some degree in that order, which didn't net results, one would hope that would warrant the overclock. I did eventually take the window off to promote better heat dispersion and it didn't lower temps as much, but it did help sustain that added frequency on the core, which overall only provided about a three to 5% performance uplift versus GPU boost doing its own thing. And this 100 and plus 90 overclock on the core and plus 400 memory overclock added about 30 to 40 watts more once applied and under load necessitating that 1000 watt power supply. And this is also taken into consideration that our 12 core 24 thread CPU, our 1920X is overclocked to four gigahertz on all cores. Which speaking of, it looks like our 1920X played nicely with our monitor's refresh rate 
IFPC, that's an instructions per cycle, isn't as much of a factor as AMD themselves markets the third rep line of CPUs toward high resolution gaming. But none of the games took full advantage of that 24 gigabyte VRAM buffer. The highest I've seen during the benchmarks was Crisis Remastered, which was taken up to 11 gigabytes of VRAM almost at the very high preset. And Heaven 2, along with Watch Dogs Legion, was hovering close to the 10 gigabyte line. So roughly less than 50% of the 24 gigabyte in total was being used during that gaming benchmarks, which is still very high to be around that limit, but that's to be expected once you're gaming at those settings and at these resolutions. I imagine that wouldn't be the case once you're gaming at say 8K, which I do plan on testing at that resolution, so do be sure if you're not yet to get subscribed to join our community to catch that video the moment it drops along with taking a look at DLSS 2.0 and ray tracing on those second and third generation tensor cores and ray tracing cores, but to avoid a 45 minute runtime, we'll have to save those topics for a separate video. So again, you know what to do. But so as the title implies, why does this graphics card exist? One thing that's hard to ignore is the RTX 3090's price tag, let alone its limited availability with all of the graphics cards being affected by the tech demic and the GPU anomaly. The RTX 3090 has an MSRP of $1,500, and with that price tag comes a few pros and cons for starters. The RTX 3090's 24 gigabyte VRAM buffer is great for content creation workflows and high setting 4K gaming and even 8K gaming. It's up to 30% faster than a 3080 and RTX 3080 in professional applications, but it costs twice as much for 10 to 15% more gaming performance and an immensely high power requirement. It's a 4K max setting, ultra settings, very high settings, ultra everything, no expense spared graphics card. It's fast enough for gamers, but priced for creative professionals who may want to do both on a single system. The Asus ROG Strix RTX 3090 is stylish. It has this premium aesthetic that screens high end. It lights well with that luminous RGB node in the front, cools well with those three axial fan blades spinning at stock settings. It's certainly powerful and power hungry, aesthetically pleasing, but demands a premium along with it but it is the most powerful graphics card on the planet right now, rather it's a good deal or not. And to learn more about building PCs and other gaming related stuff, watch the top playlist first and the bottom one next. Consider joining our community by tapping the round subscribe icon down below. And with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and go. Thanks for giving us one a watch. I hope to catch you all in the next one. So until then, be easy.